Oh, hi. I'm sorry. Hello, I'm Don Blackburn. I'm the owner of Delaware Vision Academy. Thank you. And we're currently going through a vision screen. And we're going to test distance depth perception. We're going to wear these red blue glasses here. <laughs> and actually, I'm going to test because in the other room it was the opposite. Okay. 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 As you look at those four shapes, <coughs> which shape looks closest to you? Which one looks like it's floating uh, uh, closer uh, to you? Good. Now which one? Uh, the square. The apple. Uh, the circle. The square. The house. The square. Uh, the circle. vision flexibility test where I'm using prisms to simulate an object moving away from you and an object rapidly coming towards you. And I'm looking to see if your eyes can stay with the target. Well that would be great for hitters, right? Pitches coming in for sure. Right. And then I'm, I do it at distance and near and I'm looking for the flexibility of the visual system. The more flexible the system is, the more accurate it will be. Uh, the more rapidly it'll respond. And, and so uh, this becomes increasingly more, more difficult in terms of hitting a baseball when you have excessive head movement. The more your head moves, the more things that become a little bit blurred could become... Exactly, that could easily cause that, yeah. <coughs> so you, that's why... Well, as now you're talking about dynamic visual acuity there. Okay. Because so your head's in motion. The ball's the in motion. Could be in motion, either one. <laughs> right, as, well, both are. Yeah. And so you've got to limit what you have control over. Right. And the pitches are coming at, you know, oh, let's say 85 yeah. miles per hour. So if I can control... I can control my myself body, to some degree. Right. And, and if I, I take... Make, give myself an, an added advantage. Sure. Yes. If, I, if I overstride, for example, not only do I have linear movement, but I also go down too much. And I think if, you, if, if your head moves with more than four inches down and, across, and, and forward, chances are you're not going to uh, be as perceptive. You're not going to be able to see the ball as clearly as if you had a somewhat limited head with limited movement. Your head will move, but more than four inches, mm -hmm. I'm told, is when you create some problems. Right. That makes sense to me. Yeah. And I, I do know this, that if you, as a hitter, you really need to see the ball well. And you do that by early detection, by getting to release point on time. If you get there too late, it's, it's, it's way too late. And right. so hitters don't move until the ball's out of hand. It's too late from a mechanical standpoint. They'll make the necessary adjustments, but it's not the ideal technique. Right. I see what you're saying. So, and, and one more comment. Mm -hmm. People talk about focus on the ball, and they have good intentions, but concentrating on the ball, concentrating on the whole pitcher, and then just staying concentrated, I think has um, detrimental effects. I think it should be more sweeping, scanning eyes that are soft and transfer the focus from, let's say, a wide focus to very laser-like uh, focus to release point of the baseball in the hand. And so it's that soft, sweeping, scanning eyes that allow you to have a chance of seeing the ball because you, def you don't see the ball hit the bat because you can't stay ahead of the yeah, ball. Stay, right. So 
the more hard you are uh, is the term it's I use. Hard, yeah. The, the more hard looks soft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the more blurry things become, and you just don't clearly see the ball. Well, when when a person looks hard, typically speaking, their eyes are overworking as well, and their eyes are actually starting to cross, overly cross. Oh. Now, every person has a different posture, so some people will have a tendency for their eyes to cross naturally. If I know that ahead of time and I get evidence from a questionnaire or from the coach's feedback that the person's having difficulties, not working, uh, not performing consistently, and I know that their posture is that their eyes tend to cross um, naturally and they're at bat and they're getting overly excited about it and they're starting to look hard they're probably going to see the ball sooner than it really is in, in terms of depth, and they're gonna to swing too early. And then so, you, yeah. so if you know that ahead of time, then you as the coach can say, okay, this is, this is Johnny here, and Johnny's eyes tend to cross, and this is, uh, this is gonna be really tough on him now because this is the ninth inning, and we're behind by one <laughs> run, and <laughs> we've got two outs. That well, would be, if you knew that ahead of time, you could work on trying to get him relaxed. Relax, but also and remind him to look soft. Remember, just get up there, relax, look soft. You know that kind of do right. the scanning, sweeping thing that you're talking about to help with the relaxation. I'd go a step further in terms of sitting on pitches, or I call it hunting pitches. So not only do you have to hunt the timing of the pitcher for a particular pitch, obviously a fastball comes in faster than a changeup or a curveball. I'm not going to attempt to cover a changeup, fastball, curveball, up, down, in, out. I'm looking for a specific location and a specific pitch so that my timing, I'm hunting that timing and I'm hunting where the pitch is going to be to... You're forcing the stress on the pitcher now. That's right, and my options as a hitter are lessened. The less options, the more I can focus. Mm -hmm. And I think the better chance I will have to make hard contact. I learned a lot myself. All right. <laughs> That's very cool. All right. Well, thank you now so it's much. Now to see how strategic baseball can be.